How are you still alive?
So there we have it. That was Final Fantasy IX. 
Some would say that this was the end of an era and it was the end of both the old school concepts where it was a sort of a high fantasy type of series and it was the end of the sort of, in a way, a golden age for the series because it was the last one produced for the PlayStation 1. It was originally meant to be a sort of side story, but now it ended up being promoted to a full numbered title. After this, of course, we saw Final Fantasy X, which was rather divisive, I think. And then the series continued on, and a lot of the fans think that, well, eh, they eventually abandoned what they were originally doing, and the series isn't what it used to be. But a lot of them look back at this and say, yeah, this was the last one that they did it right. Looking at it from my perspective, I see, well, it is a good game. It does definitely does more right than it does wrong. And it was definitely a good last hurrah for this series on the PlayStation 1, Arguably where it had the most success, although not literally. It, um, I'd say though, it, it's, it's sort of throwback to both the older art style that you saw in the earlier games, with the super deformed characters in the high fantasy setting. Well, that was well received and all that. I think the throwback a little bit to this sort of hybrid version of the kind of storylines and kind of storytelling that you saw in the earlier games and the somewhat more adult-oriented storytelling you saw in 7 and 8. Although, that's... There are arguments to be made against that logic. <laughs> I feel like it has some pacing problems, and some of the storytelling is rather juvenile. The characters are come across as kind of stupid. Not all of them have much in the way of a personality, or some of them have absolutely no character development. The pacing's a little bit screwy in parts, but, I mean, overall, it was de it's definitely memorable, and they do do more right than they do wrong. So, it's definitely something that I remember fondly. I think, the, uh, I think what was probably done best in this game is its art style. Because th they, they go back and do that super deformed things that we had seen in the first seven installments, where big heads and, and all that kind of stuff. I think not trying to go for a realistic art style, which is what we saw in 8, really allowed it to sort of stand the test of time. Whereas, say, 7 had the super deformed characters, but there wasn't much in the way of detail on them. They didn't have hands, it was all weird. You got jumped up to 8, and 8 had realistically proportioned characters for the most part. Not entirely, but for the most part. And... Well, as the game aged, it's like, well, hmm, the Dreamcast is out. Those, uh, PlayStation 2's out, the PlayStation 3's out. Those realistically proportioned characters, well, they just look weird and chunky. Then you do 9. Well, 9, I mean, the characters weren't made to look realistic. They have enough detail to get across what they're trying to show and all that kind of stuff. So, hey, it still looks pretty good. And the detailed backgrounds and all that, these are some of the best backgrounds, I think, in the PlayStation 1 era games, most detailed, the most intricate. So, I mean, I think the art style really served it well to make it a game that even now, what is this, uh, this came out in 99, it's 2018, so 19 years later, this game is, well, no, this didn't come out in 99, this came out in like 01 or something like, 2000, this came out in 2000, so 18 years later. 8 was in 99. I believe this came out in 2000. 18 years later, you look at this game and say, oh, yeah, it does look old. Definitely looks old, but it doesn't look bad. Whereas I think somebody can look at 8 and say, yeah, that looks bad. Somebody can look at 7 even and say, yeah, that looks bad. I think it... Some of the pacing problems come down to like, yeah, there are a few too many points where the story ramps up intensity and then turns it down, and then ramps it up and turns it down, and there's some weird things like um, characters like Blank get absorbed in, into the petrified forest, and then like, oh, well, you go and you, they eventually have to save him. I mean, he didn't die there, they had to save him at some point, so then your, your friends, not your characters themselves, you think that would have been a big 
thing later on in the game, bringing him back, but your character's friends go and save him, but then they disappear, and then they come back 20 minutes later. Like, how'd that all happen? It feels like it all just happened too quickly, and all that kind of stuff. Then at certain points, it feels like it's going too slow, like the part where you have to go and do that damn card game. Storyline at that point was too slow. The end of the game, I mean, it was a half an hour between when the final boss died and when the credits started rolling. That was... The ending was too long. I mean, the whole showing the play thing. I know what they were trying to do. They were trying to show all the different characters and all that kind of stuff. And they get down to showing this play. And then, boom, Zidane's still alive. They didn't think he was dead, but... Okay, you want to reveal that he's still alive. I think it just took a little... Oh, Skywalker Sound did this. The, um... Ending took too damn long. <laughs> Although I do think it's... Uh, I'm, I'm a little confused on how much time has passed. Is Vivi had a son? Vivi was a kid. I mean, I get that he wasn't human, so weird shit might happen there. But there are a lot of Vivis, and I guess the Black Mages haven't all died then? Because I thought they were all going to die. I mean, But, I mean... It's hard, uh, it's hard to make an argument saying that the characters don't look like they've aged, but Iko is a kid. Then she's a kid in this final cinematic, and she was adopted by the Regent Sid and all that. But she still looks like a kid, so not much time could have passed. But enough time passed for Phoebe to have a son? It was just a stupid plot point that they decide to jam in at the end without really much thought. And that's the kind of thing that I think, in a modern-day storytelling environment, you really need to be careful of. Not shoehorning in stupid crap like that for the sake of, ooh, a moment. Ha! Yeah, yeah, copyright 2000. I guess this had a worldwide launch. Anyway, I mean, all that being said, I have to say it, it is a game from 18 years ago, and it was still developing as a storytelling environment. It still is now, in fact. So, I mean, they did... They did a good job, I think. And now uh, I'll probably get a little bit of hate from people thinking like, Oh, it was the best ever. Like, yeah, well, everybody's got their own opinions. Mine's the only one that matters to me, at least. Anyway, it's the end of the series. Thank you for watching. If you like what I did here, I have a bunch of other videos. Something like, like 20 or 30 other games. I lost track. It's a lot of different stuff. Final Fantasy series I did six seven, eight, nine, as you just seen, ten, twelve. I'm probably going to do thirteen and fifteen at some point. Got Secret of Mana, a bunch of different of the Square RPGs. I also have other games, the so Resident Evil series, I got the Mass Effect series, I got the Dragon Age series, I got a bunch of different things. Uh, um, some of the Naughty Dog games. Uh, it's, I got a lot of different stuff, so feel free to check that out. Anyway, it's the end of the credits. So it's the end of this video. I can only talk for so long because we're at 35 minutes. Oh, thanks for watching and goodbye.